Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian with Exact Cybersecurity and IT. Today we're diving into a major cybersecurity incident. TeamViewer has confirmed a breach of their internal network by the notorious Russian APT or Advanced Persistent Threat Group, APT29. Before we get started, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for the latest updates on cybersecurity news. Let's get into what's going on at TeamViewer. So as I said, folks, TeamViewer, a major remote access tool used all across the world, one of the major players in how people remote into computers around the world, um, has been hit with a compromise or they've announced that they have been breached. Um, on June 26, 2024, they announced that they detected an irregularity in their internal corporate IT environment. They quickly activated their response team and brought in cybersecurity experts to investigate. The breach was attributed to the Russian state-sponsored hacking group APT29. APT stands for Advanced Persistent Threat. It means really good guys, advanced are able to stay in your network for a long time, persistent, and then, yeah, it's a threat. They shouldn't be there. Um, they are also known as, this This group is so popular, they're, they have like code names and nicknames. Uh, they've been, this group's been around forever. It's believed that they're Russian military backed. Cozy Bear or Midnight Blizzard is the names that they also go by. Interesting thing about this whole situation is that TeamViewer has assured that their product environment and customer data remain unaffected. However, the investigation is ongoing. The, the belief around this is, is that their internal network is segregated well enough from these other areas, meaning their production environment and where their customer data remains, um, that they don't feel like these two networks could have been compromised at the same time. We will find out in due time if that's true. That'll be great news for the whole entire world and the IT industry, or anyone that uses this tool, quite frankly, IT departments and companies and, and things like that. At the end of the day, if this ends up not being what they're saying, this could be as ugly as solar winds, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So let's talk about uh, who is TeamViewer. Like I mentioned, their remote access software, um, So, but for those who might not be familiar with TeamViewer, TeamViewer is a popular remote access software that allows users to control computers remotely. They were been around a long time. They've been founded in 2005. Uh, they are based out of Germany, and the company serves about 600,000 customers worldwide, and it's believed that their tool is installed in about 2.5 billion devices around the world. That's a lot of devices. This company has been around for a long time. However, this company has had their own fair share of problems from a security standpoint in the past. Quite, late, quite frankly, I'm kind of surprised there's 2.5 billion devices out there that have this software on there. I'm not a big fan of this software. We view it as a security risk on people's networks. So when we evaluate networks and we see things like Team Viewer and other, what I would consider not up to par remote access tools. There's several of them on my list. Uh, if you'd like to know what they are, drop, them, drop the question in the comments below. I'd happy to share my opinion in the comments with you if you want to know. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of remote access tools out there that don't do a good enough job on security, and I would not recommend them on a network because I believe they introduce more risk. Unfortunately, TeamViewer falls in that category for me. Although they've made strides over the years to improve their security, this is not a tool that I would want to have on any computer in any of my networks. But why is that, you say, Brian? Why? What's the risk? What's the risk with the TeamViewer software? Well, although TeamViewer states that their product environment and customer data have not been compromised, the breach of their corporate network is still significant. Any breach raises concerns about potential vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Given the extensive use of TeamViewer in corporate and consumer environments, any signs of compromise warrants careful monitoring, as we learned with the SolarWinds attack. This isn't one of those things we learn with SolarWinds, that if they get into 
networks like this and they start to figure out things like how the software is being built. Maybe there's something on the network that was vulnerable that made them look. The reality here is guys is vulnerabilities exist. There's vulnerabilities that we know of that we can detect and there's vulnerabilities that we don't know of, right? The ones that we don't know of are the scary ones because if ATP or Cozy Bear has a library of vulnerabilities that exist in their, in their database that they know about that the world doesn't, it could be that, that, that this, you know, this group was able to move into those other areas and they won't figure that out until they do a full investigation. If you don't know you have a vulnerability because you don't know about the vulnerability and you don't have a scanning tool that can tell you that this vulnerability exists in your network, um, because those vulnerability scanning tools that most IT people use to figure this stuff out rely on knowing about the vulnerability. That has to be true. We have to know about the vulnerability, and if we don't, then groups like Cozy Bear can absolutely take their research and do things like this, especially on a company like TeamViewer. You know, they're, when, once they get into that network and they know that they have the network of TeamViewer, they're going to throw everything at it that they can, and they're going to try everything they can to get to other places. And I guarantee you, once they found out that they were in TeamViewer's network, they were trying to, without a doubt, get to that software because they know there's two and a half billion devices that they could potentially get to if they can compromise this software. So at the end of the day, it's a really scary risk. We hope this turns out to be really good news for everybody but we'll keep you posted. So let's talk about and shift gears a little bit here to what should you do right now if you have TeamViewer? Well, you know I don't like it, so I'm going to tell you to get rid of it, but you might need it for something. So let's just assume you do. Let's assume it's part of your process. Your whole entire IT team uses TeamViewer, and it's really not an option for you to uninstall it or remove it at this time. There's a couple of things you can do. Uh, I found a bullet in... Uh, recommending users review logs for any unusual remote desktop traffic. Make sure you enable to factor authentication on your team viewer if you don't have it. So like if you're you know, doing it the lazy way uh, and you're just using the code or whatever to get into it, um, let's change that up today. Let's make sure we put two-factor on these logins and make sure that you have 2FA in place. It's also a good idea to use allow lists and block lists to control who can connect to your devices, right? So there's a setting in TeamViewer that allows you to set like an IP address of a computer that's accessing the other computer. That means like these hackers computers, if they happen to figure out how to get into TeamViewer, more than likely if your TeamViewer software that's running on your computer is only set to accept connections from one or two IP addresses, maybe your work IP address or your home IP address, that's a better way to set this software up than to just let every computer access that TeamViewer software. So these are things that yet you can do to mitigate the chance that if this software is actually breached, they can't get to your devices, hopefully. Uh, regularly updating the software to follow best security practice can also help mitigate your risk, meaning make sure you're on the latest version of TeamViewer. And more than likely, if TeamViewer figures out that maybe they were compromised and the software on the endpoints was, was also potentially could be compromised or could be abused in some way, they're going to push out updates to fix that once they figure out what's going on and you need to apply those updates. Why I really want to stress this is because we evaluate a lot of computer networks and we see this tool on those computer networks and a lot of times they're severely out of date because somebody comes along, installs it one time, and they may or not be using it actively or regularly, um, or they, they can in some cases use it every day and still not update the software as required by TeamViewer. And that goes with any software. So let's talk about and, and look at the larger impacts of this breach. Like I said, this breach was similar to SolarWinds. So, you know, first off, in my mind, this breach highlights the persistent threat posed by state-sponsored hacking groups like APT29. Um, even though their product environment appears secure, and that's what they're saying, it underscores, the incident underscores 
the importance of making sure you have robust cybersecurity measures in place because having these robust cybersecurity measures in place is going to be what tells this company whether or not how, how far Cozy Bear got in their network. If they don't have this in place, they won't know, so then you have to assume that they got there, right? So uh, TeamViewer does have you know, internal, based on their own reporting, the fact that they have these things segmented. It sounds like we have a pretty good chance that they have robust cybersecurity measures in place, which will help these cybersecurity experts figure out all this information and be able to provide it. Unlike the SolarWinds breach, where we found these things out over a long period of time, the hope here is, is that we find out things quickly so the breach doesn't have broader implications, particularly if any sensitive internal information was accessed that these hackers could use to potentially breach these 2.5 billion devices. So why is ATP so concerning, right? Why is this state-sponsored hacking group and ATP groups in general just so concerning? Well, unlike ransomware groups where they kind of come in and, you know, they do a little spying for a little while, but usually the end game is to deploy the ransomware. There really isn't no end, there isn't an end game like that with AT, APT. They're there to steal information and they'll stay there forever. Um, that's what this group is known for. That's what this group does. They're affiliated with Russian's Foreign Intelligence Service. It's known for uh, sophisticated cyber espionage operations. They were behind the solar winds breach. That's why I bring it up. Um, it comprom that breach, the solar winds breach, compromised numerous U.S. and federal agencies by injecting a backdoor into the software that allowed them to get into other federal computers around the globe, and it was a huge problem, and this really put cybersecurity on the map for a lot of lawmakers and elected officials in our government. Until the solar winds breach, they really weren't concerned with cybersecurity like they are today. They now understand the breadth and depth and impact of that breach, and I don't know if the team viewer breach will ever get to the level of solar winds, but it certainly has the potential. So to wrap up here, folks, it's June 28th, 2024. We're two days past when they figured this out. It really hit the news late in the day on the 27th of June. It appears right now that team viewers product environment is not affected by what's happening. The breach of their corporate network by this Russian hacking group, APT29, is a serious reminder of the ever-persistent threat that cyber criminals, cyber espionage poses on not only our government, but our private businesses as well. There's really no discerning on who the targets are these days. Businesses need to protect themselves and they need to protect their proprietary information from these groups just as much as our governments do. It's a crucial for all organizations, in my mind, to remain vigilant, um, have those really good security practices in place, make sure you're talking to a lot of different experts out there because what I'm seeing is CEOs and, and C-level people relying on maybe one or two individuals to give it to them or give them the information that they think they need and unfortunately, what we're seeing is a lot of bad information being told to uh, CEOs because maybe the information came from somebody who was just trying to sell them one of their products or something like that. So when CEOs that I talk to think that they have good cybersecurity practices, typically they only invest in you know, one or two or a couple things. I've mentioned that on the channel before. And that's just not enough. You have to do a lot, but it's not unachievable. But to act like you can just go drop a check here, spend some money there, and we're doing cybersecurity, that's not it. You gotta follow a framework. You gotta start doing these things that the frameworks ask you to do. It's many, many things. It can be done. It doesn't get done overnight. It'll get done over a long period of time. But unfortunately, businesses and our own government are behind the eight ball on this. The hackers are winning. We're seeing major companies get hit every, every day. It's only going to get worse this year. It already is the worst year on record 
and you know that's followed by the last five years being the worst year on record. Um, it's a battle that we're not really winning right now, but we can win. We can, we can beat this, we can make sure that cyber criminals don't have this much of an impact on the world, and that's what we need to get to. So if you need any help with this, there's tons of links down below. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned to this channel for more updates, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified when we put videos out like this. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and we'll see you.